September 1851 Epistle Sixth General Epistle of the Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from Great Salt Lake Valley to the Saints scattered throughout the earth, greeting. Beloved brethren, when the Savior was upon the earth, and his disciples questioned him concerning the sign of his coming, referring to the latter days, Jesus answered them on this wise, There shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, saying, Lo here and lo there, so that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. Go not after them, neither believe them. For as the light of the morning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Many of the signs and wonders and false Christs and false prophets referred to have already been exhibited, insomuch that they have declared the day when the Son of Man would make his appearance, and many have believed on their testimony and been disappointed, while those who have been filled with the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands, having repented of their sins, and received remission thereof by baptism in water, have been watching the gradual progress of the work of the Lord in the last dispensation, which has been like the light of the morning as it first gilds the eastern horizon and continues to grow brighter and brighter and spread farther and farther from the east even unto the west and so will continue until the whole horizon is illuminated with the clear effulgence of the noonday sun and the sun of righteousness shall make his appearance in the midst of his people according to his own declarations the first light of the morning in this age and time referred to by the savior was the angel who had the everlasting gospel which was to be preached to all people, preaching and ministering to Joseph Smith, Jr., and commanding Joseph to preach and administer to others, even as he had received of the angel. And the light continued to shine and spread as others believed on the testimony of Joseph, for they repented of their sins and were baptized by him. And he, having received the holy priesthood from the angels, conferred the same priesthood on the believers, and they, in turn, went forth proclaiming the same gospel, administering the same ordinances, calling on all the faithful to gather themselves together to the upbuilding of Zion, until the light has already been seen in the four quarters of the earth, and is fast being reflected over every nation and people. And this, the gospel, the plan of salvation, is the true light that must shine from the east to the west, that is, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people on the earth, before the end will come. And the faithful, the saints, must be gathered together in holy places and build temples, and do all necessary works to open up the way of life and salvation to the dead as well as the living, before they can complete the work which is given them to do in this dispensation and probation. When the saints in Zion are sowing and reaping and building, according to counsel, they are causing the light to shine as emphatically as though they were abroad in foreign nations, preaching and baptizing for the remission of sins. All things needful to be done are but parts of the great whole, which must all be accomplished before men will be prepared to be restored back again into the presence of the Father. And while we again have the pleasing privilege of communicating with our friends scattered among the nations, we know not how we can create more interest and render our epistle more useful than by devoting a portion of the continuation of the history of things as they do, and have existed since our last letter, which is only a reflection of that light which eventually must illuminate the world. For the works of the righteous, like gold and silver and precious stones, will remain when time is swallowed up in eternity. The railway from this city to the mountains was surveyed early in the season, and partly graded, and a considerable share of the timber and rails are on the ground. When the harvest season approached, the work was suspended for want of laborers, but will be resumed as early as possible. The walls of the basement story of the Seventies Hall are in progress, and the walls of the tithing barn are completed, also the walls of the joiners and paint shop and planing and slitting machine, one hundred and forty by forty-five feet on the temple block preparatory to building a temple, though all the public would have been hindered for lack of lumber, materials, and laborers. And the lack has been occasioned by a majority of the brethren's neglect to pay their tithing, both at home and abroad. It mattereth not where the saints reside, in relation to this principle it is their duty to devote one-tenth of their property when they come in the church, and afterwards one-tenth of their income, for the support of the public works, for the building of temples and other necessary purposes, and if they do not tithe themselves, they have no claim to the blessings and endowments that will flow to the faithful through that medium. A tithe of the tithing due to the, from the saints, promptly paid, would have enabled us to enclose the temple block, as we have anticipated, preparatory to commencing the temple another season. But for lack of means, the plot remains open, 
and the commencing of the building must continue to be suspended, it is time that the saints understood, and it is the duty of all elders and officers, and especially the bishops, to instruct the saints that the paying of their tithing is a prominent portion of the labor which is allotted to them, by which they are to secure a future residence in heaven they are seeking after. To be prepared for a celestial heaven, they want the blessings of a terrestrial temple, built to the name of Israel's God, and without those blessings they cannot be prepared for the greatest glory, and should have once succeeded in passing through the temple and receive all the blessings and endowments offered to any, that person never having tithed for the building of the temple or other public good, would have to hear the words of Jesus, enter in at the door, and he that entereth not in at the door, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And the house of the Lord is the door to those who help build it. But those who have the opportunity and do it not, the words of the Saviour remain true. If they enter therein, and from thenceforth, the living may not expect the blessings of the temple unless they help build it. Your tithing we value not only as it affects your salvation and the salvation of the dead. The council house is completed, the tithing store is in progress of finishing, and will be ready to be occupied the coming winter, for the several purposes designed. Instead of a join, stop us hitherto. The foundation of a tabernacle on Temple Block 126 by 64 is nearly completed, and we expect the building will be completed this fall. The Deseret Pottery is a successful operation. Some good light yellow r was drawn from the kiln June 27th, and eitware is soon expected. It is anticipated at the Valley Materials for Making Crockery. Chinaware will be equal to any other place that the pottery will soon be able to supply his market. Good potters are wanted. A carding machine is in operation and doing excellent business in this valley. Also one in Utah in progress. Four grain and five sawmills in or nearly completed. The great salt also two grain and one sawmills. County, one grain and two sawmills in Davis County, two grain and three sawmills in Utah County, one grain and two sawmills in San Pete County, one grain and one sawmill in Iron County, one sawmill in Tuella County, and an increasing desire and exertion to promote domestic manufactures prevails throughout the territory. We have visited the various counties and settlements generally this season, and found the saints industrious and prosperous, extending their farming operations as far as possible and preparing food for the brethren who are coming hither. The harvest will be abundant for all who will have occasion to eat thereof, though many fields have suffered by the drought. The mountain streams have been unusually low this season, and help scarce at the time most needed for irrigation. Harvesters are much wanted, and more threshing machines, and labor-saving machinery of all kinds can be used to a great advantage in our midst. A high council was organized at Manti, San Pete County, April 30, Patriarch Isaac Morley is president of that stake of Zion. Chalk, stone, coal, salt, and iron ore abound in that region of Iron County, also a substance resembling white clay, which answers a good purpose as a substitute for soap. We decided on locating for settlements on Salt Creek and Corn Creek between this and Iron County, and companies will leave immediately after conference to form those settlements. The birthday of the nation, July 4, was celebrated by the citizens of this valley in a most patriotic manner, on the banks of the Great Salt Lake, about twenty-four miles from the city, attended with every expression of joy and gladness that could flow from the hearts of a free and virtuous people. The 24th of July was celebrated as the anniversary of the entrance of the pioneers into the Valley of the Mountains, and in this much interest was added over former celebrations by the appearance of the pioneers in the procession each carrying the tools, or emblems of tools, utensils, and implements used by them on their route, and after their arrival even to sheaves of grain, the products of their labor. The remembrance of this day is sweet to the saints, as was the Passover to ancient Israel, and the demonstrations of gratitude and thanksgiving on the anniversary were pure, virtuous, holy, and without alloy. Several depredations have been committed by the Indians during the summer, mostly in Tuella Valley where it is computed that more than five thousand dollars worth of cattle and horses have been stolen, and mostly killed or destroyed. So great was the destruction of property that annihilation of the settlement seemed inevitable, unless the savages were met and resisted, which resulted in the death of one white man and a few Indians, which produced a cessation of thefts for a season. 
Some minor thefts have been committed in other settlements, though. In general, the Indians about the settlement have neither the disposition nor courage to fight the settlers. A band of Indians living on the Muddy, between Iron County and San Diego, appeared more hostile of late, and no doubt killed Brother Isaac Brown, when on his return from California last fall. The Indians on St. Mary's River have committed many depredations on travelers on the past year, and it is supposed killed eight emigrants about 150 miles north of this a few weeks since, and the California mail, which was expected here ten days since, September 4, has not been heard from. Elder Orson Hyde arrived in the valley on the 17th of August, direct from Canesville, accompanied by Elder Carrington and a few others, all of whom were robbed and plundered by the Pawnee Indians. During the great amount of emigration from sea to sea, through the mountains, the Indians have received some insults and abuses which they were sure to resent, and the saints and others may have occasion to pass through those tribes referred to, will do well to be prepared to act on the defensive. Dr. John M. Bernhiesel and the Honorable A. W. Babbitt returned to this place on the 19th of July, accompanied by several officers of the United States government for the territory of Utah, which was chartered last September and the general government having now received this territory into their fostering care, the citizens will be relieved of many burdens hard to be borne by them in a new country, to which they were compelled to immigrate while destitute of many of the comforts of life. Dr. Bernhiesel was appointed to the President of the United States Special Agent to expend an appropriation of $5,000 granted by Congress for the purchase of a library for Utah which appropriation the doctor made by selecting books in the eastern cities during the past winter, and the library is now on its way to this place. Many gentlemen in the States, through the solicitation of the doctor, have donated books, magazines, pamphlets, maps, and papers, which will add greatly to the value and interest of the Utah Library, and elicits our warmest thanks. Dr. Bernhiesel was unanimously elected delegate to Congress by the Territory on the 4th of August and on the 1st of September left in the mail coach for Washington City, the same day that a commencement was made to lay the foundation for a state house on Union Square in this city, towards the erection of which Congress has appropriated $20,000. The valley is well supplied with a great assortment of merchandise at the present time, but the exportation of cash having been far greater than the importation the past year, it is to be feared that many articles remain unsold which might be used to advantage were the circulating medium suited to foreign markets, in the possession of those who would like to purchase. Shingles are now extensively used. Could nails be procured? But tis not supposed that one-half, and probably not one-fourth, of shingle nails will be brought this season to supply the market, and the present prospect is that many buildings will have to be delayed before another market season, for lack of assorted nails. If a company of brethren could be formed in England, Wales, Sweden, or any other country to come, and make iron from the ore, magnetic ore of the best quality, and machinery for rolling, slitting, and cutting nails, and drawing of wire, it would be one of the greatest auxiliaries for advancement in building up the valleys of the mountains, and the presiding elders in those countries are instructed to examine this subject, and forward such a company with the least possible delay. Schoolhouses have been erected in the wards generally and schools have been in operation in the present season. The parent school has been suspended for a few weeks for lack of commodious room, but a house is in progress of erection for its accommodation, and the school will be resumed the coming winter. A portion of the wall around the university land is completed, and a portion has been delayed for want of laborers, a difficulty we often meet with, and which might be avoided if a few score of thousands of the saints who are abroad would rise up in the name of Israel's God and come home, and help us to do what is required at our hands. And it is as much the duty of the saints to gather, as it is for the sinners to repent and be baptized for the remission of their sins and every saint who does not come home when he has the opportunity will be afflicted by the devil. And why? If you will stay on the enemy's ground after you have had a chance to escape, that the enemy will claim and exercise power over you, while your faith will fail, because you have been disobedient to the counsel to gather yourselves with the faithful unto holy places, where the Holy One of Israel presides in the midst of his people, and where the power of Satan is destroyed, broken, or brought in subjection. Therefore, if you shall tarry, after a way has been made for your escape, and lose your life, or the lives of your household, or your property, whose fault will it be, and whose loss, you must bear it. Seth M. Blair, Esquire, the, and President Joseph Young, are each preparing mills and presses in our city, for the purpose of extracting the juice of the beet, 
of which many have been raised this season, and although we wish them success and anticipate they will do much to abate the scarcity of saccharine matter for culinary purposes, yet we know of no one in our midst who is sufficiently versed in refining the beet juice to make a perfect article of sugar at first, but we expect this lack of information will soon be overcome by their experience, and also the early arrival next season of a company of manufacturers from France, as we are informed by letter from Elder Taylor. We are also informed from the same source that a large company of woolen manufacturers will come at the same time, from the same country, bringing all necessary machinery, and the best of sheep, all of which are much needed here, and we hope that nothing will interfere to hinder the arrival of those companies against our next beet and wool crop. A small woolen factory is already in progress of erection in our valley, and there are many sheep here, but thousands more are wanted. Experiments at tanning hides and making leather have, as yet, been very limited in the valley. Much leather is needed in this country, and many thousands of the best hides have voted, or been wasted, for want of sufficient help to erect tanneries, and convert those hides into leather. There are plenty of materials containing tannin to prosecute the business up to advantage, and prevent the necessity of heavy importations, at an enormous expense, and if some of the brethren who are tanners would come home and attend to their calling here, they would receive the blessing of many souls. Some attempts are now making at this business, but more help is wanted. Brethren, the harvest here is great, but the laborers are few. We have made arrangements during the past year with a gentleman in Wisconsin to come hither for that purpose of manufacturing paper. Report says he is on his way, and we hope to see him here this fall. Books, papers, and every medium of intelligence through the press are unusually high at this place, owing in a great degree to the heavy transport, which will be remedied to a great extent when the rags in the valley can be converted into paper. A huge printing press has recently arrived, and all necessary materials for a respectable newspaper, and a small book bindery, all of which will probably be brought in requisition the coming winter. The warm bathhouse has been open to visitors through the season. Excellent salt is made by boiling three to one of the lake water. Good lime is burned in Red Butte Canyon. Plaster of Paris is dug within two miles of the city, and is much used at the pottery, and for finishing houses. The saleratus from the lake four miles east of Independence Rock is much used in the valley, and the saints will do well to bring what they can when they come, and the borax from the lake west of, the in of Independence Rock will be much used by our mechanics if they could get it. The church pasture on the north of its city is fenced, and the farm for the benefit of the poor on the west of Jordan is nearly surrounded by a ditch. Many houses and other buildings have been erected in the city and country this season, and many more would be if materials and laborers could be procured. Ogden, Provo, Manti, and Parowan cities have organized under their respective charters and are governed by municipal law. The nights have been warmer than usual. The past three months, winds are more frequent and stronger than common in the valley, and there was a frost on the lowlands on the night of the 28th of August. The United States Mail leaves Great Salt Lake City and Independence, Missouri on the first of each month, exchanging at Fort Laramie. Also, the mail leaves Sacramento and this place on the first of each month, and the mail is exchanged between this and Dallas in Oregon once every two months. We have a weekly mail from hence to San Pete and a semi-weekly from hence to Brownsville. A post office is established at Parowan, Iron County, but no mail route is yet established between Payson and Parowan, although at the next session of Congress we anticipate the establishment of a post route from hence to San Diego, passing through Parowan, which route will be passable at all seasons of the year. A post office is established at Honolulu, Oahu, Sandwich Islands, and letters post paid to San Francisco will be forwarded every opportunity. A letter from Elder Hiram Clark, President of the Sandwich Mission, dated Honolulu, January 27, contains our latest intelligence from those islands. Elders Clark and Whitler were stationed at Oahu, Elders John Dixon and William Farrer at Keone, Elders Hawkins and Blackwell at Hawaii, and Elders Cannon and Keeler at Maui. Having entered on their respective labors about the 20th of December, there are many whites on those islands, but they have little regard for gospel privileges. The natives generally can read and write, and are under the influence of missionaries whose policy it is to keep the natives in subjection to their theories, by personal influence and by means of the press, which issues a weekly paper. Three editions of the Bible have been issued in native sandwich, which, in the end, will prove a blessing to that people. 
no special and direct communications have been received concerning Elder Addison Pratt and the mission of the Society Isles, since his return thence, or from the other missions, in and about the Pacific, though report says the work is very prosperous in Australia and other places in that region. By the star of July 1st, we learned that there are 42 conferences composed of 642 branches of the Church in the British Isles, and 3,872 elders and priests, and more than 32,000 members, and the Gospel is continuing to spread and believers to multiply faster than ever. Nearly a thousand have emigrated this past season, and fifty were baptized from on board the ship Olympus on its passage from Liverpool to New Orleans. Elder William Howell presiding. Elder William Burton of this city died at Edinburgh last March. This is the third death among the American elders while on the British Isles. Elder Flanagan died at Birmingham on a previous date, and Elder Bates some years since. And the fourth of all that have died on foreign missions in this dispensation. Elder Hanks died at sea on his passage to the Society Isles in the year 1842. The London Conference numbers over 3,000 and is receiving more than a hundred per month by baptism. In Italy, the work is gradually progressing under the presidency of, of Elder Lorenzo Snow, and the deep-rooted tradition of ages is beginning to give place to sober reflection and the light of truth. Elder Snow is translating, if not already completed, the Book of Mormon into the Italian language. The Waldenses are beginning to look after the truth, and Switzerland is becoming glad in the hope of eternal life. Elder John Taylor is in France, preaching and translating the Book of Mormon into French, though probably the translation is complete before this and the prospect is flattering in that country. Elder Erastus Snow continues his labors in Denmark and has translated the Book of Mormon into the Danish language, so that that most important of all books to this generation may now be read by the greater portion of the inhabitants of the earth, in some language with which they are familiar. Much opposition has been manifested toward the gospel in Denmark and adjacent countries, yet truth has triumphed and will prevail, and Satan will continue to oppose and fight until he is bound and that opposition is good to prove the faith and integrity of the saints, and that is one reason why it is necessary there should be a devil, even to prove men, and make manifest who the righteous are. Miracles are wrought, the sick are healed, the lame leap, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and God is with his saints. The gospel has recently gone from Germany to Iceland. At no time since the proclamation of the gospel in this age has the church been in a more prosperous state than at present, at no time have the saints been more ready to follow counsel and do things which are acquired of them, and God is blessing them on account of their obedience, and yet there is room for improvement, for advancement in everything that is good, and that man who does the best he knows how today should so continue to live in the exercise of faith and intelligence which will produce good works, that he shall know more and be ready to carry that knowledge into practice, so as to be better and more useful tomorrow and so on from day to day till he is prepared to enter into the presence of the father if men would be great in goodness they must be intelligent for no man could do good unless he knows how therefore seek after knowledge all knowledge and especially that which is from above which is wisdom to direct in all things and if you find a thing which god does not know you need not learn that thing but strive to know that which god knows and use that knowledge as god uses it and then you will be like him will see as you are seen, and know as you are known, and have charity, love for one another, and do each other good continually and forever, even as yourselves. But if a man have all knowledge and does not use it for good, it will prove a curse instead of a blessing, as it did to Lucifer, the son of the morning. If a sinner is advised to repent, and be baptized for the remission of sins, and he does it not, it will prove to his condemnation instead of a blessing and he cannot receive the laying on of hands of the elders for the reception of the Holy Ghost, if a saint who has received the Holy Ghost is counseled together with the saints to come home, and he neglects to come. He has no further claim to the blessings promised unto the faithful, who obey all the commandments. His light becomes darkness, and remaining in this state, where God is, he cannot come. For the ordinances of the house of the Lord, in Zion and her stakes, are as necessary for a full salvation as baptism is for a partial salvation. And the voice of the Good Shepherd is to all saints, even to the ends of the earth. Gather yourselves together, come home, and more especially to the saints in Potawatomi, the United States, Canada, and the British Isles. Come home. Come home. O oh, ye saints in the United States, will you listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd? Will you gather? Will you be obedient to the heavenly commandment? Many of you have been looking for and expecting too much. 
You have been expecting the time would come when you could journey across the mountains in your fine carriages, your good wagons, and have all the comforts of life that heart could wish. But your expectations are vain, and if you want for those things, you will never come. You will leave your to rot in the midst of Gentiles, and your faith and hope will depart from you. How long shall it be said in truth, the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light? Some of the children of the world have crossed the mountains and plains, from Missouri to California, with a pack on their back, to worship their god, gold. Some have performed the same journey with a wheelbarrow. Some have accomplished it with a pack on a cow. Some of the saints, now in our midst, came hither with wagons or carts made of wood, without a particle of iron, hooping their wheels with hickory or rawhide or ropes, and as good and safe a journey as any in the camps, with their well-wrought ironed wagons. And can you not do the same? Yes, if you have the same desire, the same faith. Families may start from Missouri River with cows, hand-carts, or wheelbarrows, with little flour and no unnecessaries, and come to this place quicker and with less fatigue than by following the heavy trains with their cumbrous herds, which they are often obliged to drive miles to feed. Do you not like this method of traveling? Do you think salvation costs too much? If so, tis not worth having. Sisters fifty and sixty years old have driven ox teams to this valley, and are alive and well yet. True, they could have come much easier, walking alone, than by driving a team, but by driving the oxen they helped others here, and you cannot come the easier way? There is grain and provisions enough in the valleys for you to come to, and you need not bring more than enough to sustain you a hundred days to assure you a supply for the future. And let those who are coming with teams, and have the means, bring nails, glass, paints, oil, wire, Osage orange, and other choice seeds, and such articles as are most needed in a new country, to exchange with the brethren here for bread, and start earlier than usual, even as soon as teams can possibly be supported on the prairie, so as to avoid the spring rains and floods, and be here to assist in the harvest. Dispense with all useless rubbish on the journey, and provide stock of the best quality so far as you are able to bring any, and silver instead of gold, for such is scarce, and silver will be most useful. The funds for the immigration of the poor are continually increasing by the exertion of the saints in the valley, and it is the due of the saints in the states and other places to add to those funds according to their ability. President Orson Hyde will return to Canesville this fall, and make preparations to remove his family to this place the ensuing season. Elders Ezra T. Benson and Jedediah M. Grant repair to Canesville immediately after conference and superintend the immigration the coming season. They are sent expressly to push the saints to this valley. Elder Woodruff will remain at this place at present, also Elder George A. Smith, unless circumstances shall occasion his return to Iron County. Nothing definite will be heard of, of Parley P. Pratt, Amasa Lyman, and Charles C. Rich since they passed Salt Lake last spring, though the papers reported their arrival in California with 140 wagons, and it is supposed that Elder Pratt is pursuing his mission on the islands of the coast of the Pacific, and that Elders Lyman and Rich are making a settlement in California between this and San Diego, and gathering the saints thereto, and that they will appoint missions to the, as the Spirit shall direct. They also are instructed to extend settlements toward Iron County at every desirable point, with as little delay as possible. Elder Orson Pratt is on the way from the States, and about 500 wagons, mostly of the Saints, who are emigrating to this place, but they started too late, were hindered by heavy rains and floods, and it will be very late before the next camp will arrive. By recent communication of President F. D. Richards of Ogden, we learn the prospect of immediate immigration of the European Brethren to San Diego, as we had anticipated, is in no wise flattering, there being no regular shipping from England to that port. Therefore. Elder Richards will continue to ship the saints by way of New Orleans to Canesville as hitherto. Only be particular to start them earlier in the season so they can be at Pottawatomie in season to build their handcarts and walk or ride over the mountain as they may have means before snow falls. Many of the English brethren and sisters think it a trifle to walk fifteen or twenty miles to hear preaching on the Sabbath and return home at evening and then stand at their labor the remainder of the week, and can they not walk twenty miles a day for fifty days for the sake of getting to their father's house, to the home of the saints, in the valley of the mountains? Some may have teams, some cows. They can kill buffalo and other game by the root, and when weary, rest a day, if the Sabbaths are not long enough, and can they not thus fare as well as ancient Israel when journeying towards Canaan? 
They were traveling forty years. But the saints can walk from Canesville here in twice forty days, and harm no one. Now is the time for the saints to come, except such as are counseled to tarry and preach, and the like, and they who can come, will never find a better time. If some of the saints would bring shepherd dogs, they would be of great use in the valley. Shepherds also are needed here. Elder Richards will also appropriate so much of the emigrating funds in his possession as may be necessary to forward two shiploads of saints to Canesville, where they should be in April, ready to prepare for their journey over the mountains. Let your selection be made in wisdom, having regard to those who are faithful, and having borne the burden in the heat of the day, and also in some measure to their professions or trades, according to our need of the various mechanic arts, as we have suggested, and your information of circumstances here shall prompt committing them to the care of agents, wise men, who will receipt for all money, and who will take receipts before landing of every individual to the amount he has been helped by the funds, with a promise to refund the same as soon as he can procure the means, and let each company remain together until they arrive at this place, where it shall be told them what to do. Start no more saints on account of the poor fund than you forward means, by the agents in charge to see their respective companies safe through to the valley, and let no funds go into the hands of those who are helped but let all monies be expended be paid out by the agents for passage, provisions, and such things as are indispensable, taking receipts of all, in the harbor of New Orleans, and also at Canesville, and let all those receipts, funds on hand, vested in oxen, cows, or other property, in the hands of the agents, or in the use of the company, be reported at our office immediately on their arrival. It is expected that every person assisted by the fund of the emigration of the poor will help themselves to the utmost of their ability, and not one bring stores of merchandise to the expense of another tearing behind. No, let him who has chests of gold or money pay his own passage, and let those he helped who cannot help themselves, or but in part, and many can furnish every necessary thing but their passage money, and many a portion of that. If those assisted by the poor fund expect to ride in carriages and wagons over the mountains, the number you can forward will be very small. But if they have faith to walk through a few teams loaded with flour, will help make a multitude comfortable, and many can be removed at little cost. The funds now on hand amount to more than thirteen thousand dollars, raised almost entirely in the valley, and if the saints in England and other places shall be as diligent the coming year in donating to the fund as have the saints here, a great ingathering may be expected to follow. The semi-annual conference of the church commenced at the Bowery in this city Sunday, September 7th at 10 a.m., and continued from day to day till Wednesday the 10th instant, when it adjourned on the 6th of October next to meet at the same place. President Brigham Young presided during the conference, which was composed of a vast assembly of the saints from all the settlements, and the various proceedings were marked with strong feelings in preachings, teachings, testimonies, and in sustaining all the general authorities of the church as they were last April, except Lewis Abbott deceased, and Elisha H. Groves removed to Iron County, and William Snow and Winslow Farr were appointed to fill their vacancies in the High Council. Nathaniel H. Felt and John Banks were appointed presiding traveling bishops to travel in the church and among the branches, counseling the bishops and seeing that they are faithful in their calling, in gathering tithing and causing it to be forwarded to the general office in keeping correct accounts, and they will settle with the several bishops from time to time, and repoint the same to the presiding bishop. Ezra T. Benson and Jedediah M. Grant were appointed agents to gather the poor, and President O. Hyde's agency was continued. Elders Samuel W. Richards, Willard Snow, Abram O. Smoot, Dor P. Curtis, and Vincent Shirtliff were appointed missions to the British Isles, and Daniel Cairn to Germany. President John Young received a mission to Ohio to preach the gospel and gather the saints, and elders John L. Dunyon to preach the gospel to the states. The conference voted to observe the word of wisdom, and particularly to dispense with the use of tea, coffee, snuff, and tobacco, and in this thing, as well as many others, what is good for the saints in the mountains is good for the saints in other places, and if all who profess to be saints would appropriate the funds lavished on luxuries and articles unwise to use to the benefit of the public works, we would soon see another temple of the Lord. The conference also voted to commence anew with their tithings and consecrations, and that within thirty days each saint should make a consecration of one-tenth of his property, and one-tenth of his interest or income ever after, and that those who will not thus tithe themselves be cut off from the church. A fire is kindling in the earth, and who can quench it? A light is shining, and who shall extinguish it? 
The nations of the earth are fearing and trembling. The fire burns and the light dazzles, but they know not what to make of it. God has set his hand to restore Israel and save the remnants of Ephraim, but they know it not. The oldest and most powerful governments are shaken to their center. The kings know not the cause. The way is fast preparing for the introduction of the gospel into China, Japan, and other nations, which for ages have sat in darkness, and stood aloof from celestial science and foreign intercourse. And it is the business of the twelve apostles to fill every open door, and push to the right and the left with the horns of Joseph, until every heart shall feel, and blow the trump of salvation, till every ear shall ring with the glorious intelligence that there is a God in the heavens, who guides the destinies of all men, and who would that all men should come to the knowledge of a crucified Saviour and be saved. Brethren, pray for us. Sisters, pray for us. Be humble, prayerful, watchful, diligent, and persevering in every good word and work, and in the end you shall overcome all evil and sit down with us as in our Father's kingdom. Elders of Israel, lift up your voices like trumpets. Open your mouths wide and proclaim salvation to all the meek of the earth, and you shall bring many souls to Zion. It is our wish to see all the members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles at the General Conference in this city on the 6th of 1853, and we hope the brethren will be a arrange the affairs of the various missions, such a manner that no injury will be sustained by the saints while they shall spend a season with us in council, and we pray the Eternal Father, to bless the saints throughout the earth, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brigham Young, Heber C. Kimball, Willard Richards, GSL City, September 22, 1851.